Yeah, thank you. We we're gonna actually present um, cognicity, but first we're gonna we're gonna introduce that or present it through Padavinchana, which is the program that it's being used for now, um, and kind of walk you through that. And I'm going to give you a little bit of background about what Padavinchana is and how it works, and what it is that this crazy collection of people do together. Um, before I turn it over to Nachi Makani, who is one of our project designers to talk a bit more about how Cognicity works specifically. So, um, so Petamanchana is an, it's a an publicly accessible and publicly generated online mapping tool for managing disasters in Indonesia. Um, we have mostly been working on flooding because it's a major problem in Indonesia and Jakarta specifically. Um, but we can handle other disasters. They just, they're self-sorting, you know? Um, so this, collect, we have people in our team that are, that kind of run from philosophers to architects to geospatial geniuses <laughs> to um, computer science, urban planning, kind of the whole gamut. And uh, when we all, is that what? Yeah, it looks like it does on my screen, great. Um, so so uh, when we all kind of got to Jakarta a few years ago, like we were all sort of looking at this region in terms of the fact that it holds more than half of the world's population within this circle, and that um, 14 of these major megacities are sitting in river deltas, and 18 have experienced major flooding in the past decade. Um, and that affects nearly 300 million people. And what can we sort of do about that that might be a novel approach to a problem that a lot of people are sort of working on um, and using uh, computer platforms to do so. So in 2013, we sort of all found ourselves in this flood situation in Jakarta, which, uh, believe me, was much worse on the ground than it looks in this photo. Um, and. Uh, and also knowing that these, these floods at this scale have been growing more consistent and much worse since 1996, even though they have an even longer history. But when you're on the ground there, you understand that while the government doesn't have like an amazing capacity to deal with this problem, um, though they're getting a bit better, the people on the ground do. Um, they've been living in this for a very long time, and they have ways that they communicate with each other, that they know how to respond, they know which areas need to be evacuated and how quickly that all of that needs to happen. And as we're sort of tromping through the city in water up to our waist, we're like, what do we, what do, we do with this scene, which we're sort of seeing everywhere? Um, and in Jakarta, in Indonesia alone, there are 79 million people using social media numbers from 20, uh, 2016 and over 66 million of them are using social media on mobile devices. Well, we were just in a conference last week where we learned that there are around 600 million people actually living in Southeast Asia now and um, over 700 million smartphones in use currently. So there are over 100 million smartphones more than there are people in this region. And that is an amazing statistic. <laughs> and it opens a lot of opportunity to do some really interesting stuff. So, yeah, okay. Um, so we took uh, this kind of information and thought, well, what can we do? And so in that first year, we just sort of turned on a kind of ambient listening within Twitter, um, which I, as I am not like a computer programmer or whiz, I can't tell you how to do it, but it's like a thing that exists in Twitter. You can just do it. I'm sure all of you can. Um, <laughs> so in 2014, uh, 2013 monsoon season, there were over 13 million tweets that we were able to geolocate um, about flooding in within this bounding box around Jakarta um, because people had geolocation on. And we're like, okay, that's enough people having a conversation about flood that we can do maybe something about this and kind of bring the conversation that's happening on the ground to the government, to other people that can make bigger decisions and kind of bring local sort of crowdsourced ground knowledge up to the top. And maybe we can design something with a cross section of residents and people in the city that can do something a bit more powerful. 
but do it in real time in a way that is responding to what's happening in the moment, not trying to, to collect a historic sort of database of what's happened or be predictive about what is going to happen. Um, so we developed a, a platform called Cognicity. And Cognicity is a, is a series of tools, this is all available on GitHub, um, that, that is how Padabinchana works. Um, and it can be used for anything. Um, and I'm going to turn this over to Nasheen um, to give you a little bit more information about the specifics of this platform and how it is a bit different from other sort of crowdsourced mapping programs. But this, our pilot project for Cognicity was called Peta Jakarta. And I mentioned this because you're about to hear this term about a million times in some videos. <laughs> and um, Peta Jakarta is the same project as Peta Vincenna, but as our scope and uh, scope of services kind of and location sort of increased, we changed the name from Peta Jakarta to Peta Vincenna. Jakarta, Cognicity is an open source software that integrates the management of both social media as well as API source data to make hazard information open and accessible, not only to the residents, but also um, for the government agencies and non-government um, organizations. And last year we were awarded with the Open Data Showcase Award from the Open Data Institute. And with their support, we produced a short video that explains a little bit about how Cognicity works um, and we just wanted to play you a few chapters of this. The full version is on YouTube. Yeah. 
reporting and government agency validations in real time. The map displays the rapidly changing conditions that affect infrastructure systems and their users, providing immediate information for residents, first responders and municipal agencies. By enabling reliable, non-trivial communication between users and government agencies, the platform promotes civic co-management as a form of megacity climate change adaptation. Um, and so as, as that slide says, information is the most important resource in a disaster, and which is why it's critical that this is all open um, source and open data, because decision making has to be a democratic process. And one of the critical successes of the project is that um, it bridges this information gap between the disaster management agency and um, residents. And so in order to gather, sort, and visualize um, data from a variety of localized networks onto these lightweight platforms, um, the software is organized into three software modules. And this next chapter briefly explains the architecture. Thank you. 
leverages the scale and capacity of cloud services, thereby minimizing Cognicity's impact on the climate change events that the system helps to monitor. Okay, so with that name change from Peta Jakarta to Peta Benchana last year, we scaled from serving around 28 million people in Jakarta to 56 million people across these four cities alone. And that was just kind of dealing with, with flooding as the, the problem. Um, and I think one thing that what Nasheen just showed you uh, where we've seen um, all of this really hard work going to Cognizity like really pay off is a couple weeks ago we had a pretty major flooding event in Jakarta and we had over 4 million map loads in less than 24 hours and the system was able to kind of take that in really seamlessly and let it back out. Um, and w another issue in Jakarta is the, not just in Jakarta, but Indonesia in general, I guess, is that the internet doesn't always work so well, um, or it's really, really slow to load. And so um, we've also kind of worked very hard to kind of design a system that can, that can load the map very quickly, even, even in like poor service conditions. So um, we're gonna try to show you the way that We've also kind of designed this system to, to be sort of media and platform agnostic because as we have also scaled to these different cities, we have learned that um, not every city uses the same platforms to communicate across. So for instance, while we have um, a high usage of Twitter in Jakarta, we have very few people using Twitter in Surabaya. <laughs> So we have to learn how to how to have communications with people who want to report in ways that it's both about building a community. So we're not just sucking up ambient information and putting it on a map, but we're actually having a conversation with people and trying to bring them into a, a sort of community building uh, system to sort of co-manage the cities um, in a way that is productive. And I don't, I can't see all of that guy. So if you're using, one of the ways that we've, we've worked to solve this problem is to make a set of cards that can be used via Twitter, they can be used uh, via um, any kind of messenger service. So if someone wants to message us about a flood, um, if you just use Twitter, you can just hashtag Benji or hashtag flood and we'll get that message and then we'll send you a response to these cards. But you can also, if you're using Telegram, and this is one of the tricky things, is like, Facebook and WhatsApp. WhatsApp has all these members, all these people on Facebook, but it's owned by um, it's owned by Facebook. But WhatsApp is, and they don't like to play ball with us. So every we can use them, we can send these messages out, but within 24 hours or so, they catch us and they change their API, and we can no longer do it. So the Telegram, on the other hand, is fantastic and they're super fast. So it's not going to be that fast with this situation. Um, but if you're using Telegram, you can search for the Vincenna bot and send us a message. That looks like this, yeah. Um, and our bot will send you this back. So it sends this back and it's, it's very quite fast when you're doing it on your own phone. Um, and so you can drag this map around and pick your location. We'll just skip that so for the interest of time. Uh, you tell it where you are and then drag this up to whatever the flood height is. more impressive when it works, you know. <laughs> um, so you can take a photo and you can just do this live. Just take a photo and it'll 
upload it seamlessly, or you can grab one from your photo, photo library. Then enter a bit of descriptive text uh, to give us whatever information that you need. And I should tell it that this is a test so that, so that the government doesn't think there's something crazy going on. Um, but at the end of that, uh, you would just slide this over, submit your report, and it'll send you, I'm just going to click on it. Um, and you're just, it'll send you a link to show you your report on the map and you can see your contribution immediately. So um, that's, that's kind of how, I mean, that's really the main thing. Um, we're, with ben, Peta Benchana, we, Peta Benchana specifically covers Indonesia, but we are now looking at other hazards including Earthquakes, tsunamis, uh, typhoon, um, fires. Like I know Singapore, you have a lot of problem with our, our haze that we like to send you guys. Uh, so we're kind of starting an investigation into that, and which brings up a lot of really, uh, really interesting questions about privacy um, because it's important. It's much we already have a system that, that provides complete privacy to people sending in reports, but with flooding, it's not that big a deal. You know, it's everybody's problem. Uh, fire is a little bit of a different matter, particularly in this haze issue. Um, and then we're also uh, we're also working on a project with with MSF, uh, Doctors Without Borders, um, to kind of redesign the way that they can monitor and assess and engage with disaster response and management across across the, the globe ultimately, but for the moment it's just South and Southeast Asia. Um, and one of the other things that we're kind of here for this weekend is to promote a project called labnet.asia, which is really to kind of bring all of these um, amazing people from across the entire region that are working on, on issues that are both directly urban but also are not but could possibly be. <laughs> Um, to, to further the use of cognicity and, and try to apply all of these amazing um, thinkers and, and interests to humanitarian use um, and just kind of hacking our urban environments to better suit all people. So, thanks.
So uh, you, which means that um, you can't, like this is because to prevent the government or anybody from going into the map and like seeing information that is 12 hours old and trying to act on that information when it's no longer valid. Um, so it's always meant to be real time. Um, you can, all of our information is also, it's, we have a completely open API, so you can go in and download all of our information, including historical stuff, and do anything you want to with it. Um, yeah, we're, <laughs> that's all fun. Um, the ver val validation? Verification? So, so one, because we don't just map um, everything that mentions flood, we have a conversation with that with that person with that report before it goes on the map. Um, that we have had almost no issues with people submitting false information. Um, sometimes it's not super helpful information, of course, but that happens. But also the government, BPBD in Jakarta, they are constantly monitoring the information as well. So it does go through our AI system, all of our bots kind of managing that, but then they look at it and if it's correct, they verify it and you see like the little report goes from white and blue to blue and white. So you can see that it, it's been validated by official systems. And that, so then it kind of get, lets you know that something is, you know it's right, or you know, oh, maybe that's not quite it. That's our way of dealing with that. I also live in Jakarta, so I know a little bit about what you're talking about. You're very good at um, You also work here with Hot OSM, I believe, to yes. provide your, your mapping. Um, do you have a sort of minimum data quality level that you try and uh, have before you start going into Mary, going into more areas? And there's still large capital cities and areas, um, and that's where there is existing maps that are open and have good quality data. Is that going to be a limitation in where you can uh, use this uh, system in the future? It sounds like you're right at the time. There's no map space at all. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure there's many regions throughout Asia that have these problems that some of them have maps. And yeah, do you anticipate trying to go into those regions or are you only looking at the bigger cities and the next level and the next day? Yeah, sure. We're not only looking at mega cities, but hot. You guys are, are homies. We can't go anywhere without them, really. So, <laughs> so if they're not willing to go into a place and try to map it uh, or help us do that somehow, then we kind of we have to wait until that information can come up um, to serve certain areas. In Indonesia, that hasn't been so much a problem. It's pretty well mapped. Um, there are some cities that that aren't. Um, but yeah, I mean, to a minimum level of mapping is required, but say Ternada, for example, we've been asked to look at Ternada, and Ternada doesn't have uh, the same quality of mapping as Jakarta. But it's okay as long as there's like a, a basic level of, of understanding of where a person is in the city, it's fine, we can go ahead and start working in there, and Hawk can, can work at the same time, and we can get the information up to date as, as it's available. Um, and that's, that works for us, because um, it's more about people on the ground knowing where they are, and as long as they can place themselves and place what's happening, then great, and we'll get, be we'll get better information as it's, as it's available. Uh, I think it's a great project. I like it. It's awesome. But I didn't get the point, how you make use of the data? Are you using some kind of algorithm like predictive analytics, so you get this kind of data, First of all, can you predict where will be the next flooding? Because you have such a amount of data. Second, what you do with the images? So you have to text an image. How do you process this kind of thing? This is like homogeneous data, so you need a couple of capabilities. 
Uh, it's because we don't right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> so much data and so useful. Why are you not pushing it, you know, in a, in a sort of deep learning thing and you just get, you wouldn't predict, you know? Yeah. So well, Jakarta has taught us a few things. One is that you cannot predict flooding in Jakarta. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think anybody who's been in Jakarta for very long, you, it's like, you never know, you really never know where the water is going to be and how deep it's going to be and how quickly. And that is only, um, only getting more and more true because of the normalization project that is completely changing the flow of water through the city and kind of in a haphazard way. So we intentionally do not try to, to do predictive analytics with our information. I, particularly from my background and Nasheen's, I know um, our predilection is to do that, but, but intentionally we sort of hold back from, from trying to. There are other organizations that do pull our data and try to do that with it. Um, I, as far as the working to sort of crunch all of the reports and the, in the photos and all of that kind of stuff, that is something that we're sort of working on for other projects, maybe not as much with flooding, um, but I think that's, that will be particularly important with other disasters when, I mean, say a major earthquake hits, like you get millions of reports in a very short amount of time. Um, and that, that I think becomes more important. And I don't know, we don't have the answer to that yet, but I, we will. <laughs> in general and about Cognicity and its further use is that it's all open. So you can come into to, you can